Hi everyone, I wanted to do a quick video about uh, the Wife of Bath because there are some important uh, pieces to Chaucer's Wife of Bath tale that uh, will really help you understand how it fits into the time period that Chaucer is writing. So let's talk about, um, first let's talk about the estates of men and women. Uh, so the estates of men and women, men uh, were deemed to have the authority, uh, and this authority kind of is through books. Um, so men were the ones who were reading uh, the Bible, they were writing about the Bible, they were being educated, whereas women weren't being taught to read or write, and so that gave men kind of the upper hand. Uh, there were three estates of men, so you had the clergy, so those were the ones who were, you know, in the church, the, the ones who pray. You had the nobility. Uh, so nobility were members of the royal court, the knights, the guard. Uh, and then you had the commoners. Those were the ones who were, you know, working. Those were the peasants. Now, women also had separate estates. And women were kind of representative of experience. Uh, they were inferior to men because... Uh, at this time, the idea was that Eve, you know, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, uh, Eve was the one who was, you know, who fell to temptation. And it was because of Eve that uh, humanity fell out of God's grace. Uh, so because of her ill deeds uh, in the Garden of Eden, uh, she is the reason why women are inferior to men. Uh, in the estates of women, you have the virgin, the wife, and the widow. Uh, there's also the nun, um, but that doesn't really represent a majority of women. Uh, so we're going to talk about just women who are not part of the church. Uh, so you have the virgin, the wife, and the widow. So if we're keeping with this biblical theme, uh, the virgin Mary in the book, you know, Jesus's mother from the Bible, uh, she was, you know, good and chaste and lovely and wonderful and all of the things that a woman needs to be. And so um, that is how women were supposed to behave until they found a husband. And then when they became a wife, women were to take care of the husband, take care of the children, take care of the home, the cooking, the cleaning, you know, all of those um, domestic duties that are traditionally uh, set up for the wife in a relationship. And then you have the widow, who is a wife whose husband is dead. Uh, and there was no other role for women to play uh, in, in this time. Uh, so what Chaucer has done in his uh, Canterbury Tales is he is writing all of these characters in a satirical way. He is describing them as absolutely absurd, um, or they are acting the opposite of what they're supposed to be acting to kind of illuminate the absurdity of this social class system, this system where women are objects for men to um, obtain instead of human beings, uh, this system where men are superior to women simply because they can read words and not because they are, you know, more intelligent. So, uh, he's really kind of making commentary about how absurd the social system is during his lifetime. So let's talk about the wife of Bath. How is she specifically uh, this absurd character? Well, the way that Chaucer describes her is, you know, just kind of over the top in all ways. Uh, she has been married five times. She's, you know, her prologue. Uh, is three times longer than her actual story. So her prologue is kind of like her backstory. So that gives us this idea that her experience is more important than her presence on the pilgrimage. Uh, and so she represents that idea that it's the experience of women versus it's the authority of men. Um, other ways that she is satirical in nature, um, everything about her is kind of exaggerated. She is described, you know, her size is is large. Her clothes are over the top. She has a loud mouth. She has been married an excessive number of times. Uh, she is over the top in all aspects. 
Uh, so she is quite the opposite of what a virgin wife or widow would be in Chaucer's time. Um, so let's talk about her experience a little bit. Uh, she's had five husbands, so that kind of makes her an expert on how to be a wife. Yet, one of the main purposes of a man marrying a wife at this time is to have children, and she has no children. Uh, so, in some social circles, that would make her a bad wife. Uh, but she she has five husbands, so she must be very experienced in how to be a wife. Um, she talks about, through her marriages, some things that she's learned. Uh, she speaks about lots of books that she's read. Uh, which makes her an anomaly as far as women are concerned because she can she's well read she can read books uh, and smart women were considered dangerous to their husbands uh, so you know she is very much the outlier of what women should be um, she also talks about this double standard for sex in the the country and it's still kind of a double standard that we see today uh you know we have this idea that women should not have multiple sex partners while men are expected to have multiple sex partners and the same is true in chaucer's day and she's pointing out that you know if men are going to have multiple sex partners then that means that women can't be virgins uh but the the social idea is that women were supposed to be virgins until they got married and the men were supposed to be well experienced when they got married um she also talks about kind of the common violence towards women in uh this time so she talks about her third husband now her third third husband hit her so hard that she went deaf and her response was to hit him back uh, which you know is warranted but at that time women were expected to just accept violence towards them uh and then you know she talks about the knight's tale and you know his violence towards the maiden um but one thing that i want you to understand is that she begins her prologue by claiming that experience is a better guide to truth than authority and so she's marking here in chaucer through her is marking here that men are considered superior to women because their authority lies in books but it's the women who have the real world experience it's the women who are you know in the world living this life and it's their experience that is actually the truth we can write anything down in books that we want but the experience is where actual truth comes in and so um you know chaucer is kind of making a point here that uh, her experience should hold more authority than a man because her street smarts are better than his book smarts, so to speak. Uh, which brings us to her story of the night. Now, the wife tells a story about a knight who sexually assaults a maiden. Okay, now the knight is, you know, just under the clergy, so he is well respected. Um, if you remember from Sir Gowan and the Green Knights, knights are supposed to live by a code of chivalry. So the way that he treats the maiden is very much outside of that code of chivalry. Uh, so, you know, she's telling the story of the knight and his misdeeds because she wants to exemplify that commonality of violence towards women, uh, which further gives us this idea that Women are objects, not humans. They're objects to be used for a purpose instead of humans to live with. Um, now, the knight is granted a reprieve from punishment if he can figure out what tr women truly want. And he realizes at the end of you know his quest that all women really want is to be accepted and treated as equals intellectually. Uh, women are not after some grand power over men. Women are not, you know out here trying to take over the world women just wanted to be seen as equal parts you know it takes a man uh, and a woman at this time it takes a man and a woman to sire a child to you know then have a family and so women at this time just wanted to be acknowledged as part of that process uh, so you know 
in some scholarly circles, the wife of Bath is then considered kind of like the original feminist because she is trying to get this idea out into the world that women are more than just objects. Uh, so that's kind of Chaucer's purpose in having the wife of Bath tell the story of the knight and his treatment of the maiden. Uh, so you know, that is it for the wife of Bath for this week. Uh, be sure you are reading carefully all of the other information that is posted in our Blackboard module for this week. Uh, have a good one. If you have any questions, please email me. Thanks.